In this problem, we have the same uh, expression that we had for the previous problem. In that one, we just wanted to graph it. Uh, we use the same technique here. Now we want to solve graphically. Before, we just wanted to see what it looked like. And we used this technique here where we factorized it and we found the zeros. Now, to solve graphically, what that means is if you have the graph, you want to solve, which means where is this going to give us values of uh, 0 for y? So solving, again, means where does this cross the x-axis? So just like we use this factorizing to find where it crosses here, we know right away, just what we did last time, the values here that will give us 0, right? So if we plug in positive 5 here, that will give us 0 for this term, and therefore 0 times 0. Something else is going to be 0. Again, negative 2 here gives us uh, negative 2 plus 2 is 0. 0 times something else gives us 0. So our two answers are just these two points where we cross this x-axis at x equals positive 5 and x equals negative 2. So we can also write that as x1 equals 5 and x2 equals negative 2, just to be clear. So those are our two answers, graphically and from factorizing. Here we have an algebraic equation that we want to solve for x. x squared minus 3x minus 10 equals 0. So we want to take this equation and solve for x. To do this, we're going to use the completing the square method. So it's a, new, a different method than some of the other ways we've been doing it. To do that, there's a, set, there's a little algorithm that we follow to do that. There's a couple of different ways to do that. I'll do it my way, which I find to be simple. Uh, step number one, move this term. So we have this in the form ax squared minus bx, uh, sorry, plus bx plus c equals 0. So uh, the first thing we want to do is move the c term to the other side. So we have x squared minus 3x equals 10. Now the second thing we want to do is take this term, b, the b term, divide by 2 and square it. So we're going to find b over 2 squared. So b is negative 3. And we square that, so that gives us 9 over 4. So 3, negative 3 squared is 9, 2 squared is 4. We take this term. The third step is we take this term and we add that to both sides. Remember, you have to do the same thing to both sides. It's still an equation. So x squared minus 3x plus 9 fourths equals 10 plus 9 fourths. Great. Fourth thing we want to do is simultaneously simplify this side by using common denominators and factorize this side. That's going to be called completing the square, that step right there. This looks a little bit ugly, but to complete the square, we know that we already have the pieces we need. So let's, let's start with this one. If we want to have common denominators here, 10 becomes 40 over 4. 40 plus 9 becomes 49 over 4. To complete the square here, we know we're going to have x's. We know we need uh, two negatives, because this is going to come out to be positive. So we need two negatives to multiply to get a positive. What do we put in here? Well, it's just this. It's this b over 2 term. So that b over 2 term is 3 halves. So you can see right away, we could just put in negative 3 halves. So 3 over 2, 3 over 2. What is completing the square? It means these two quantities are exactly the same. So we can actually just write it as this, a square like that. And that's what they mean by completing the square. Let's just rewrite it then. Great. So we're almost done. Next thing we need to do is basically solve. We have a square here, which means we need to take the square root of both sides. We're digging out that x still. So let's do that. Take the square root. And that gives us x minus 3 halves here. This is simplified to that. The square root of this is going to give us a plus and a minus number. And this is how we get our two answers from this quadratic equation. So, Square root of 49 is 7. Square root of 2 is 2. And remember, don't forget your plus or minus here. So you have two answers. Finally, one more step. We need to get this x all by itself. We add a 3 halves to both sides. So x equals 3 halves plus or minus 7 halves. So this is going to give us two answers, the positive version and the minus version. So x1 equals 3 halves plus 7 halves. 3 plus 7 is uh, 10. 10 divided by 2 is 5. So we have x1 equals 5. Now we have 3 halves minus 7 halves. So x2 equals 3 halves minus 7 halves is negative 4 halves. 
negative 4 is uh, divided by 2 is just negative 2. So we have two mini equations here at the very end. So this gives us x1 is 5, x2, negative 2. We have the same formula again that we want to solve for x. x squared uh, minus 3x minus 10. In this case, however, instead of completing the square algebraically or graphically, we want to solve it using the quadratic formula. So if this is equal to 0, as we've said, we want to solve for this using the quadratic formula. It's just a formula that's given. We know that x then is equal to minus b plus or minus the square root of we have b squared minus 4 times a times c all over 2a. Great. We're just going to plug in our numbers here and see what we get. What do we get? Well, we have ax squared minus plus bx plus c equals 0. So a is equal to 1, b is equal to negative 3, and c is equal to negative 10. We want to plug these three values in here, and we're going to get two answers because of this plus or minus in the square root. So let's plug that in and see what we get. Negative b. b is negative 3, so negative is negative and positive 3, plus or minus the square root of b squared. Negative 3 times negative 3 is 9. Minus 4a, which is 1, and c, which is negative 10. Great. Don't forget you're all over 2 times a, which is just 1. Excellent. Just numbers, just a little arithmetic, and we'll get two answers out. All right, let's start simplifying. We have x equals 3 plus or minus the square root of, now what do we have under here? We had 4 times 1 is just 4. 4 times negative 10 is negative 40. And then we have two negatives, so that comes out to be positive. So 9 plus 40. All over 2. So 2 times 1 is just 2. So a little bit further to simplify underneath the square root x equals 3 plus or minus the square root of 40 plus 9 is 49 over 2. And finally, we can take the square root of 49. The square root of 49 is 7. So 3 plus or minus 7 all over 2. So this gives us 3 plus 7, which is 10, and 3 minus 7, which is uh, negative 4. So we're going to have two answers. x1 equals 10 over 2, which is just 5, and x2, which is negative 4 over 2, which is just negative 2. So here's our final two answers. Don't forget we've got two answers. It doesn't matter which one you call 1 and 2, but I like to distinguish between the fact that these are different values of x. So we have two answers using the quadratic formula, same as we got before using the completing the square method.